go back to that cause and to to because that cause might be a very desperate call sometimes. So thanks, I think you already spoke for him. Like a father, well, if I don't have been to put me looks in the rough, I allow put my corner. So I want to buy us, but when you saw my business, Jabba is good. Okay, Jim, I'm going to start. So, Mzansi, this video is inspired by a comment I received in the comment section of our last video. So, please take note before you run back to the comment section to comment and give us your opinion. Remember, this video is intended for educational purposes only. Nothing I say here is considered fact. It is all alleged. Now, the comment uh, that I'm quoting is, it said, to, it said in the comment section that, no, Peggy Tele was not just at Anil Tembe's funeral he literally spoke at her funeral and you know as Google would have it this video popped up and Lord after listening to it was I shocked at what he said uh, for those who don't understand let me give you a quick translation Minister, Honorable Minister Peggy Stele, speaking at Anneli Tembe's funeral, is talking about Moses Tembe, Anneli's father, and he says, people don't know who you are. They see you as a businessman, but don't remember or know that you came from the townships. They don't know which streets you're from. Oh my goodness, Mzansi, did that make me pause and rewind and listen to it again. It seems that Minister Peggy Tele allegedly is reminding the people that don't know who he is, that is Moses Tembe, that listen, this is Moses Tembe. He's from the townships. He might look like a, a businessman right now, but he does not have humble beginnings and he's from the streets. I'm not going to say anything, but what do you interpret from that sentence from the honorable minister himself? Why am I bringing this up? Because it is quite shocking to me how invested he is that he's cleared his entire schedule. Remember, he did the press release. Okay, no problem. And then he showed up in court. Oh, that's pretty interesting. And then he sat front row seat at, this is not even a, a hearing. This is not even a trial. This was just a pre-trial where, you know, everybody shows up, shows attendance. The five accused have to, by the constitution, show up in court, um, be given an, uh, an appearance in front of a judge within 48 hours of being charged. Somebody please tell me, why is Begit Tele there? Is this the only active crime right now? Are there no other active crimes that he can supervise? The reason this stood out to me is because he's consistently there in the forefront. Okay, some of you will argue in the comments, like I know you will. You will say he was at Anneli Tembe's funeral because that's what he's supposed to do. It is a part of his job description. Okay, not a problem. I accept that. Why was he not at AKA's funeral? I don't know it's a question and you can go ahead and comment down below and let me know your thoughts on that but let's continue listening to the honorable minister's speech at Anneli Tembe's funeral we know now accident but this is so for those who don't understand i'll give a quick translation for those he gives thanks for you know being given the opportunity to speak at her funeral and he said he had just come to grieve with the family but when he was asked to speak he took the opportunity as well to speak and everything else i'm guessing he's implying the case or figuring out if she jumped or didn't jump will be done later but right now it's time for mourning and he confirms i know this family for a while i know this family 
personally. And now let's listen to AKA talk about that fateful night when Anele Tembe passed away. Why would he, do you think he made that comment? <clears throat> well, I, I can't speculate as to why he would say those things. Um, I can't speculate as to why he, that was his statement. But what I do know is that I think culturally, for, for what I can think of, I think culturally, you know, mental health and uh, depression, especially suicide, um, culturally in terms of the family as well, it's, it's, it's taboo, you know. Um, it's a no-go area. It, it's something that won't happen to our child. It's something that, that couldn't have happened. Um, but I also know at the same time that he was well aware that Anela was on medication. We spoke about it many times. We had spoken about her sometimes getting off her medication, not being on her medication. Um, we had spoken after she had spent a week in uh, uh, a psycho, um, uh, psychiatric hospital in, in Umschlange. Mm -hmm. So he, he was well aware that she had stayed there for a week. Um, he was aware because me and him spoke uh, 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 at length about her suicide attempt in Durban. He was the one who picked her up from hospital. Uh, so we had spoken many times. Um, and it wasn't just us. Um, my mother had sat down with me after the, the Hilton uh, Durban incident. And it sat me down and said, son, are you, are you aware? Are you, uh, you know, aware of what this is going to take? And are you prepared to, 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 to go the distance with somebody, who, you know, with, with a condition like this? Do you understand it? Are you educated enough on the subject? He shouldn't have given this interview. He's choosing words. He's not saying much. He's literally throwing Anile under the bus, blaming past conditions or things that happened. And he's not talking about what actually happened on that day. This interview should never have been um, put out there. And now, unfortunately, both him and Anila Tembe are six feet under, which is very, very unfortunate because both of them were quite, quite young at the time of their passing. But now we turn to Twitter to see what the brave at heart have to say on the topic. Moses Tembe was aware of his daughter's Swizz's ideations. He knew she had been admitted at a mental health establishment, but he decided to write a letter and lie to everyone. Oops. Wow. Another one reads, no one can walk up to AKA and shoot him dead at point blank range. Someone ordered that hit. Question is, who had the biggest motive to want AKA dead? Simple, Moses Tembe. And the Daily Sun tweets, one thing about Twitter, They'll never let you forget. The Daily Sun tweeted, Tycoon Anele Tembe's dad says, I didn't do the it. Instigator says, AKA's father, Tony Forbes, says his gut feeling tells him that the true mastermind behind the murders of AKA and Tibbs has not been caught. Well, that is absolutely obvious because AKA, unless AKA had a secret business with taxis and he's part of the taxi wars in KZN, yes, the true mastermind hasn't been caught. And these seven that have been arrested, where did they get the 800,000? The 800,000 came from somewhere. Now, this tweet caught my attention. It's by Dalim Bofu and it reads, Both Anil and AKA were decent youngsters. I knew well since their childhoods. Both fondly called me their uncle. I've known their parents for a long time. Moses Tembe is one of my best friends, a decent, kind man, incapable of such evil. Both families are suffering deeply. Please stop reads the tweet but why does moses tembe's friends always stand up for him we have begi tele there talking about you guys don't know who moses tembe is don't see him as the entrepreneur you guys don't know him he's from the streets and then we have dalimpo for saying stop it why do they rise to his defense because that's when we look even closer at him why why can they all not just keep quiet how many taxis do they have but wait we'll get back to those um to the accused or should we call them the suspects but here's our final tweet for the day in response to Dalimpofu, it says we won't stop tembe had motive to kill aka him being your friend is immaterial 
You were Winnie Mandela's friend when she was implicated on Stompy's death advocate. One thing about Twitter, they will remind you of things even you have also forgotten about. But what say you, Mzansi? Is it time for Twitter warriors to put down their pens and let the law take its course? Is it time for the Twitter warriors to give Moses Tembe a break from these allegations and insinuations that he might be the mastermind in the AKA and Tibbs murder. Let's move on to part two of the story where the Times of Eswatini gives us details about, you know, the two on the other side of the border. Well, Times of Eswatini are really giving us the details and this is what they had to say. It is reported that immediately after the two AKA murder suspects were apprehended by the police, a Liswati man rushed to collect all household items from their rented flat. I don't know why they're calling it a flat because from the pictures that we saw, that is a house. Unless in Eswatini, they call houses flats. Let us know, Mzansi, are you in Eswatini? Tell us why they're referring to this as a flat but let's continue along it says he removed all items from the flat does this not sound familiar remember the senzo mayua trial and the neighbor that came and removed all the bottles it's alleged this person came to empty the flat why was the crime scene or should i say this hideout house why was it not sealed off for evidence why was this man able to access the premises and remove a property is he the owner of the property because in the other news report they said it was owned by a woman so why was the stuff removed what is it that is there is there any money that was concealed in any of the furniture pieces because we know they spent a lot of time partying and drinking what are your thoughts on that is this is this a coincidence that yet again the property is gone the men went into hiding four months before the murder of aka and tibbs they fled to eswatini to hide from ongoing taxi wars says a family member to the four of the seven suspects. But then we also find out a neighbor and community police member in, Esa, in Eswatini confirmed that the suspects moved into the house into the house where they were arrested in November of 2023. This, tweeter sa- this tweet says, the family should be charged with defeating the ends of justice. What say you, Mzansi? On everything that we've discussed today, from Anile Tembe's father to Dalim for defending Anele Tembe's father and Peggy Tele being front and center in everything to the man taking all the property and most finally the family members giving an alibi to the four suspects yet a community policeman can confirm that those men moved into that house in Eswatini in November 2023. That's it from us today. We hope you have a great weekend and catch you on our next upload. Remember to like, comment and subscribe as this tells us you're watching our our videos and you're enjoying them.